Hey guys, it's Tori. Welcome to my channel, or welcome if you're new. So today, just sit back, relax, grab a coffee or a tea, because in today's video, I'm going to touch base on a bunch of great information for sublimating and be as thorough as I can. I'll leave chapters in the description below for those of you who may want to skip ahead to a particular chapter. First topic, sublimating on the cheap. If you've seen any of my other videos, you may know that I purchased my first confection toaster oven from the thrift store for $7.99. $7.99. I decided to go that route since I wasn't sure if I would be sublimating a lot of tumblers or mugs, but now that I've been sublimating tumblers and mugs more, I wanted a bigger confection toaster oven so I could supplement more than one tumbler or mug at a time. My husband happened to find another confection toaster oven at the thrift store, and it is so much bigger. This one was only $15, so we are going to be using this in today's video, and I'll show you in a little bit. So, a couple of things before we switch topics. If you're new to sublimating and you don't want to invest a lot of money in buying a sublimation oven, you may want to check out a thrift store near you. Secondly, when you use a confection toaster oven for sublimating, you can no longer use it for food. So let's get started. Let's first open Cricut Design Space. And I bought this template right here on Etsy. I'll leave the link below. When buying a template like this, just because it says it's for a specific mug, example, like a 12 ounce or a 15 ounce, it doesn't mean that the template is ready to go. When sublimating mugs, some people like to leave a gap by the mug handle that's not sublimated, and some people may like to sublimate the entire mug. In today's video, I will be using a 15 ounce Cricut beveled mug and I want my wrap to fully cover my mug, so I'm going to be tweaking the dimension. To find out what size I need for my mug, let me show you what I do. So to find out what the measurements are for this cup or mug, I'm going to use a tape measure and I'm just going to place it here and measure it down here. So this is 4.25. So let's go ahead and write that down 4.25 by. The next thing that I do is I take a string, take a piece of tape. Here is where it's going to be. So I'm gonna take this and cut right there. Next, I'm going to measure the string. Place this here. Bring it down and I get 10.7. So I'm going to write 10.7. Now that we know what the dimensions are, I'm gonna go up here and click unlock and I'm gonna change it to 10.7 and the height is 4.25 and enter. This is what I need for my 15 ounce beveled Cricut mug. Now that we know the dimensions, we need to make a duplicate of this. So let's go ahead and make a duplicate, slide this over. Next, I am going to hit ungroup and I'm gonna to start to delete the verbiage and lines on the inside. Next, I am going to select the entire image and I'm going to uh, click on combine and weld it. Now this is one solid image and we're going to use this as our template. So I found this on wallpaperaccess.com. If you type that in, you can find a lot of free images and I just typed in, I think I typed in giraffe for this one. The next thing we're going to do is just kind of adjust the image. Okay. And then I'm going to place this image over this image and I'm going to select both and hit slice. Okay, so this is the wrap that I wanna use. I also thought it would be cute to add this little giraffe. If you're using different images and you wanna make sure that they are aligned in the correct place, 
that's when I use the original and I place it over the image as a guideline. If you drag your image onto the template and you don't see it, then you would select both the image and your template and uh, select align, bring to front. If you get a warning message telling you over, over here that the maximum print area size for print and cut projects is 9.25 by 6.75 and it's telling you to reduce the image size, then you are probably in the live version of Cricut Design Space. To resolve this, the first thing you wanna do is save your project because we're gonna close this and you definitely don't wanna lose anything that you've just done. So the first thing to do is save your project. The next is go over here on the top left hand side, you'll see three little lines. We're gonna click on that, scroll down to settings, and set, you'll see here the application experience says live. We are going to change it to beta. And then we're going to click on done. Cricut Design Space will now close and it will reopen and you'll wanna go back to your saved project. Okay, so now you will see on the top left corner that is Cricut Design Space Beta. So now we are in beta and now we are going to go back up here and go back down to settings and then I'm going to go to load type and I'm going to change this to an eight and a half by 14 legal. So now we're gonna hit done. Now you should be able to hit make it and not see the warning sign. And now we're going to make sure to turn the mirror on and hit continue. And then we're going to send it to the Epson printer. I'm going to leave the bleed on and turn the system dialog on as well. The system dialog takes you to your printer settings so you can change the quality of your print. Here I'm going to select my Epson again and then preferences, change the document size to eight and a half by 11, change the paper type and quality. And I'm going to select premium presentation paper mat and high quality paper. Just to mention really quickly, um, I think when sublimating, it's a lot of trial and error and what works best for you and what you're sublimating. So what works for me may or may not work for you. Sometimes when I sublimate, I change the printing preferences to my ICC profile, but today I'm not going to use my ICC profile since I think the color came out better not using it for this specific project. Here you want to have color controls. The color mode, I have Adobe RGB, the Gamma 2.2. And here I just adjusted this to for what I needed. Then we are going to hit OK and OK. And we're gonna go ahead and send it to the printer. I'm gonna go ahead and select laser paper since that's the texture of my uh, sublimation paper and then let's go ahead and load the mat. Okay, so you also want to make sure that you place the paper um, exactly how it shows right here on the mat. Okay, we're gonna hit the double flashing arrows. and then the go button. Before applying the sublimation paper, it's important to remove any debris or lint from the mug. You most likely won't see any debris, but it's there. And if we don't clean it, you will notice spots on your mug after sublimating it. I pour some rubbing alcohol on that paper napkin and I clean the outside of the mug thoroughly and then make sure it is completely dry before applying anything to it. You can also use a lint roller if you like instead of rubbing alcohol. If this is your first time sublimating, you may notice that the color looks dull when first printed. That is completely normal for sublimation ink. Once the ink is sublimated onto the mug with the high heat and pressure, the ink converts to a gas and infuses on the mug and will become bold, bright, and vibrant. Next, you need to make sure to wrap the sublimation paper tightly around the mug 
and tape it with heat resistant tape. I find it better to tape all around the mug to ensure that the sublimation stays snug around the entire mug. You want to also make sure to tape around the handles to ensure the image is pressed against the mug really well. I think that helps a lot when sublimating. Otherwise, you may notice it looks more faded in those spots. Then I place the mug inside the sublimation shrink wrap. I fold the shrink wrap over the mug handle, then make a little incision where the handle is. That way your handle can fit through the incision and then it will fit more snug around the mug. I continue wrapping the mug and taping it with heat resistant tape. Once that's done, it's time to use the heat gun. Okay, so this is the confection toaster oven and you can see it's a lot bigger if you've seen any of my other videos. It doesn't have um, the little thing up there to make it not have room. So anyway, let's go ahead and get it warmed up. I'm gonna put it at 400. It's on confection and I'm gonna turn the timer on. And I'm gonna set the timer away for 15 minutes because you want this to heat up for at least 15 minutes before you use it. So let's get that started. Okay, so I have a heat gun right here and we are gonna go ahead and shrink the shrink wrap. And just um, a little FYI for everything. Everything I'm using is meant for sublimating. So this is sublimation shrink wrap, uh, sublimate, sublimation cup, everything, or sublimation mug. Everything has to um, be meant for sublimating, otherwise it will not work. So let's go ahead and shrink this up. The important thing with the heat gun is just to make sure that you shrink as much as you can and make sure that it is as snug as you can make it. It is very important to wear heat resistant gloves as the toaster oven is very hot. I'm going to sublimate the mug for 15 minutes. Since this confection toaster oven is bigger, I will not be rotating the mug. And now it is time to take it out. Don't forget to wear your heat resistant gloves because the mug is very, very hot. And we're ready to go ahead and remove the shrink wrap and sublimation paper. So I think this turned out really, really good, you guys. What do you think? Leave a comment below, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.